Newsnight. Anti-aircraft fire over Baghdad tonight as America confirms that air raids against Iraq are underway. Good evening. An attack on Iraq by America and Britain is happening as we go on air tonight. Air raid sirens sounded over Baghdad about an hour ago. Anti-aircraft fire from Iraqi positions fired up into the sky. The action follows the decision by United Nations arms inspectors to pull out of Iraq in protest at Saddam Hussein's refusal to comply with their demands for access. The Iraqi leader earlier today warned his people to brace themselves for what he calls a US-British aggression. We'll be devoting the whole of tonight's programme to the crisis. We'll be bringing you any news from the Middle East as it comes in. We'll be asking whether military action can really force Saddam to give up his weapons of mass destruction and whether the situation there can ever be resolved while Saddam Hussein remains in power. The Prime Minister, Tony Blair, has been speaking about this evening's decision to launch airstrikes against Baghdad. He said that every possible care would be taken to avoid civilian casualties. The targets chosen, therefore, are targets connected with his military capability, his weapons of mass destruction capacity, and his ability to threaten his neighbours. We are taking every possible care to avoid civilian casualties. I cannot, for obvious reasons, go into operational details. But I do want to say one further thing. Our quarrel is not with the Iraqi people. It never has been. The whole world should know that we have allowed Saddam to sell oil to buy as much food and medicine for the Iraqi people as is necessary. It is a lie for him to say otherwise. He could have fed and cared for his people, but he has chosen not to. Our quarrel is with him alone and the evil regime which he represents. There is no realistic alternative to military force. We are taking this military action with real regret, but also with real determination. We have exhausted all other avenues. We act because we must. A short time ago in Washington, the White House spokesman Joe Lockhart gave the first confirmation that the attacks were underway. At the direction of the President, United States military forces have launched a substantial military strike against Iraq. The President decided to take this action this morning after reviewing the conclusions of the report to the United Nations Secretary General and Security Council yesterday by UNSCON Chairman Richard Butler. Well, let's go straight over to Baghdad and our correspondent Jeremy Cook who joins us on the phone. Jeremy, just describe what it's like there at the moment. It's relatively quiet here at the moment after the huge din which we experienced just before uh, 10 o'clock your time. Uh, what ha what's happening now is there is still sporadic anti-aircraft fire uh, lighting up the sky over yep. the Iraqi capital. But uh, as I say, in sharp contrast to what well, happened... Well, Jer uh, Jeremy, sorry to interrupt you. Just, just to point out the viewers, we're looking now, in fact, at a picture of the night sky uh, over Baghdad, presumably just above where you are. You you're in the information ministry, are you? That's right, yeah, and uh, uh, what, what, as, you, as you may see, there, there are uh, ongoing um, anti-aircraft artillery rounds going up. What happened, as I say, just before 10 o'clock was that uh, there was no air, air, raid shelter, uh, air raid siren or anything like that, simply a huge uh, series of very loud explosions uh, which were followed by a cacophony of sound from the uh, anti-aircraft artillery which is positioned right across this city. Now, we didn't hear any aircraft coming in, and we think that suggests that these first attacks may have been carried out by cruise missiles. That was the expected uh, uh, modus operandi of this attack. Uh, but uh, we are told now that uh, if the anti-aircraft uh, capability of the Iraqis has been neutralized, then we might be expecting some aircraft raids perhaps tonight or perhaps in the coming nights. Jeremy, j just to get this clear, I know it must be very difficult to tell from where you are, but these thumps you described, it, it, the assumption is that was 
incoming weaponry, is it, rather, rather than part of the, the anti-aircraft uh, reply? Yes, that was heavy weaponry. The, the, the difference between the thump of a loud explosion from a bomb or a cruise missile, uh, as opposed to the, uh, the, the, the thump and the crack of an anti-aircraft round, is something which we're already getting used to distinguishing here. Uh, and uh, certainly the, there was incoming fire into uh, the central area of Baghdad uh, less than one hour ago. Jeremy, what's the political atmosphere there like? Uh, one of the things that's been slightly surprising today, as you know, in the last crisis, Saddam Hussein jumped in at the last moment and said, look, I'll comply. Um, there's been very little, hasn't there, from the Iraqi leadership today uh, to, to try to stave this off? The Iraqi leadership seemed to have given this up as a bad job uh, even before the report was put out to uh, uh, the Security Council from Richard Butler, the Chief Weapons Inspector. They've been uh, getting tougher, if anything, in their talk and certainly don't seem to have been searching for a diplomatic way out. They've talked about uh, a litany of lies and of evil intent on the behalf of um, the UNSCOM inspectors and they say that this was always going to happen. They told their people that this was always going to happen no matter what level of cooperation they offered to those UN weapons inspectors. Yeah, I can understand that in terms of the propaganda they put out. What do you think their real feelings are? Do you, do you think that they, they just genuinely believe that there was nothing they could do to stop this happening? I think they, there was nothing they were prepared to do to stop this happening. They could have let the inspectors in. They could, uh, certainly in the view of uh, Washington and London, have scrapped any capability or any uh, aims they have to, pr to um, prepare and uh, store weapons of mass destruction. There was nothing that Saddam Hussein was prepared to do. And remember, it's not just, we it's not just airstrikes which he was trying to avoid. He was trying to persuade the uh, UN Security Council that now was the right time for a comprehensive review of the sanctions which face this country, sanctions which have uh, basically crippled the economy here and which are the, fo the policy objective of Saddam Hussein's government is the moment, at the moment is to have those uh, sanctions lifted. But what they're looking at now is rather than even a review of the sanctions, they're looking at airstrikes, not only in Baghdad, but we probably think across this country. All right, Jeremy, look, thanks very much indeed, uh, and take care. Uh, we're joined now from Washington by our correspondent, Philippa Thomas. Uh, Philippa, what's the latest from there? Well, we're expecting to hear from President Clinton shortly. Within the next half hour, he's expected to deliver a televised address to the nation from the Oval Office. We know what his line will be. He'll say that Iraq has brought this upon itself by refusing to comply with UN weapons inspectors. And the US has said that it will face action if it continues to refuse, continues to renege on its promises. And President Clinton will say there is no political coincidence here. We had the UN report on Tuesday. Action had to follow. Uh, but there is a political question, isn't there? The, the, uh, while the Republicans have put off the impeachment hearings, I understand it, Trent Lott, who's the majority leader in the Senate, has said he, he won't back this military action, which seems an extraordinary thing to say. It's an extraordinary statement. It's very significant. And yes, Trent Lott went into some detail when he said he cannot support this action in the Persian Gulf at this time. He said there are serious questions of timing. He also said he felt that the action was the wrong sort of action and that there should be more clearly defined objectives, for example, to bring down Saddam Hussein. So uh, a very serious statement from the leader of the Senate and a lack of bipartisan support for this action. Yeah, what's the significance of this, Philippa? I, I was struggling earlier to think when a similar situation had arisen. If you remember when the attacks came on Sudan and Afghanistan earlier on this year, the Republicans immediately backed the president. Uh, I Absolutely, think probably the yeah. Vietnam War would be the nearest situation to the one we have now. This is almost unprecedented because you're right, the last time there was such military action against Afghanistan and Sudan, that was only two or three days after President Clinton had given his evidence to the grand jury. We were in the thick of the Monica Lewinsky saga and yet when military action was taken, uh, Congress as a whole rallied behind the president. It was seen to be an expression of the national will. And now we have almost immediately, almost as it was still rumored that this was, this was happening, uh, we've heard from Trent Lott that he simply cannot support this action. He's been briefed by President Clinton, but he's not happy with the timing or the nature of the attack. What, I know it's unfair to ask you what the American people think, but do you think this will have an, an impact on public opinion in America, which has been solidly behind both Presidents Bush and President Clinton in previous Iraq crises? Are people likely, do you think, to be saying, well, maybe he's just doing this because of the impeachment process which was due to start tomorrow? 
I think everybody is going to raise that question because, of course, we're on the eve of the scheduled impeachment debate, which may now be put back to Monday or even later. I think people are bound to ask, well, when he makes his speech to the nation, uh, he knows that people will be saying this is rather a cynical maneuver. Maybe he's trying to push back the impeachment debate, maybe even push it back until January by a uh, sustained military attack upon Iraq. So he knows he does have a lot of skepticism to overcome. But he has pushed it back already, hasn't he? Just tell me a bit about this delay that's been introduced, didn't it? Because we were expecting the impeachment process to start tomorrow, weren't we? We were. Uh, as President Clinton, of course, decided upon the military action this morning. He has been briefing congressional leaders. So for the last few hours, there's been a lot of activity between Capitol Hill and the White House. And Ooh. it was agreed by Republican leaders early on that if there was going to be a military attack, there couldn't be the historic impeachment debate at the same time. Hence, bipartisan in that sense, an agreement to push the debate back, Where possibly Monday, possibly later. All right, Philippa Thomas, thank you very much indeed. Now, we're joined... We're joined by David Loyne from uh, uh, based down at Millbank. David, can you hear me? Uh, yes, Gordon, indeed. Ah, yes, there you are. From Sorry, outside number couldn't 10. see you for a moment. Um, what is the line coming out of number 10? We, we had uh, what Tony Blair had to say uh, earlier on. Uh, what, are, what, are his, uh, what are his spin doctors saying? Well, not very much, because this was a very full statement from the Prime Minister. There was a curious sense of business as normal here tonight. The Prime Minister and his wife went out, we understand, to a carol service. The Foreign Secretary held his annual Christmas party, a large event, because the political decisions were taken in November. The political decision was um, that uh, if Saddam Hussein broke his promises again, um, then there would be no more warnings. And to an extent, British and American military credibility has been on the line tonight. Um, there's been a real expectation in Whitehall all day to, th that there would be uh, air raid tonight, and we've now seen that there are. Um, is, are they happy? You say the political decisions were taken uh, several weeks ago, obviously, but, but clearly that there has been to and froing, diplomatic to and froing about the timing of this. It's very sensitive. I mean, Ramadan starts at the weekend. It's not going to look very good uh, in, the, in the Arab world, obviously, if, if there's some military action going on then. Are they sensitive to that down there? Well, yes, they are, but there are two um, sides, if you like, to the Arab world. There is a, obviously a real concern that among the Arab people, um, that they might uh, lose their way and lose the, the, the propaganda war, if you like. Um, but last yeah. month there was a crucial meeting which took place between eight leading Af Arab countries um, called the Damascus Group, which effectively gave the green light to air raids. They didn't approve them, but the Arab, world, the Arab world's leadership is now resigned to Britain um, and America taking on Saddam Hussein. They're not opposed to it. Um, David, are you expecting any more from the British government tonight, or, or, or is Tony Blair's statement dead? Tony Blair's statement is, I think, such a full um, um, summing up of the reasons for going to war, as we've heard him say that Saddam Hussein's um, is now a serial breaker of promises, that's the, the, the phrase from this statement, um, that Saddam Hussein is obstructing um, and so therefore Britain and America want to destroy his weapons of mass destruction. I mean, he gives in such full reason um, the reasons why he has taken, as he says, the greatest responsibility that a Prime Minister can, uh, sending British servicemen to war, that I think that we will wait until tomorrow now for the technical answers. The other um, key thing in this statement is that Britain's um, involvement in this force is clearly going to be significant. Uh, tornado bombers from Kuwait and Saudi Arabia will be involved, um, if not tonight, then shortly. And tornado GR1 reconnaissance planes will also be involved in photographing uh, the sites before and after attacks. All right, David, look, thank you very much indeed. Well, I'm joined now by um, uh, several people to cast light on the situation. Um, Abdul Bari Atwan is the editor of Al Quds, an Arabic language newspaper, and writes extensively. On the, on the Middle East, John Nichols was a navigator in tornado bombers during the Gulf War and has since become highly critical, I think, of the way that the West's strategy towards Saddam Hussein has evolved. Peter Galbraith is on the board of Indict, the campaign to indict Iraqi war criminals. He's a Democrat and a former director of the Foreign Relations Committee of the American Senate. And uh, John Bolton joins us from Washington. He's a former Assistant Secretary of State in the Bush administration and uh, formulated American policy during the Gulf War. Peter Gorgraith, if, if I could start with you, uh, it looks like we have not only a, a military action on our hands tonight, but a possible split in the government, the American government, which is the main force behind it. Do you expect to see them pulling together over the next uh, few hours? I, I certainly do. 
Uh, this is not the first time that, the, that there have been criticisms in advance of military action. In fact, uh, in 1991, just before Desert Storm began, uh, the government was divided largely on partisan lines with the Republicans supporting President Bush in authorizing military action. The Democrats opposed. Once the action began on the 17th of January, the country rallied behind the president and armed forces, and I expect exactly the same thing will happen this time. Right. Now, what do you expect this action to do? What are you expecting over the next few hours? What sort of military action are you expecting? I, I don't think you can have a one-time raid as we've had in the past. So I think this is, is something that is likely to be sustained. Uh, targets, I presume, include uh, the suspect sites, uh, Iraqi uh, military facilities. But there's also a need for a broader strategy uh, aimed at uh, removing Saddam Hussein and his regime. And I think Prime Minister Blair made, it, made that point very clearly. It's not just the man. It's a whole system. Uh, that strategy ought to include uh, support for the Iraqi opposition. It, it ought to include pursuing uh, Saddam Hussein as chief lieutenants for war crimes, genocide. Well, can, can we leave that question for the moment? Okay. What I'm interested in is the immediate objective of this. The, the, the British have been saying, and I presume the, Amer the Americans the same thing, it's, it's, it's to force Saddam to comply. But realistically, if we do get the kind of military action you've just described, um, do you think UNSCOM are ever going to be back in there, or is that particular game now over? I think that game's over. There's, there really is no possible compliance with this regime. Uh, even if uh, you could uncover all the, the sites where they're making weapons, and there may not be all that much left, uh, the real issue is the intent. And this is a regime that intends to develop weapons of mass destruction, and it intends to commit genocide against its Kurdish population, and it intends when it has an opportunity to attack its neighbors. And so it has to be held in check. Barry al the, the, the signals that were coming out in London earlier on today was that the, the coalition which had been reformed a few weeks ago to attack uh, Iraq, there was that statement from the Gulf Council which yes. basically said, okay, just go ahead and do it, that that was still in place. There have been, as far as I know, no great protests from Saudi Arabia or, or the Gulf states. D is that your understanding that they're still backing this, <coughs> even if discreetly? Well, I was attending the Gulf Cooperation Council summit in, in Abu Dhabi just a week ago, and I didn't have the same feeling, actually. You know, it's true, maybe they didn't voice their opposition to the military strikes, but deep down they are not happy because if these strikes goes wrong, for example, it will be catastrophe for the whole region, not just, you know, for, for, for these little Gulf states. We don't know if, suppose Saddam Hussein survived and he managed to, as he did survive in 1991, what will happen to them? What will happen to the Arab streets? You know, the strikes coming at the worst time of the Middle East, the peace process collapsing, President Clinton failed to make this, you know, why implementation, why uh, plantation agreement implemented by the Israeli prime minister and the Iraq under sanction, uh, people are really feeling uh, toward the 20 million Iraqis suffering and children dying. So I think, that, and also Ramadan, which is the holiest month in the Muslim calendar, is in three days away. So what do you want more than that? I think the Arab world will erupt because of this. Well, we'll come back to you in, in a moment. <coughs> We're just looking now at pictures coming in live from Baghdad. You can see there, I think that's in fact from the roof of the, either the Al Rashid Hotel or the Information Ministry. <coughs> it looks fairly <coughs> quiet at the moment. It, it was from that precise spot that about half an hour, in fact, that looked as if it might be, maybe it was just a light over there. Uh, it was from that precise spot that a few, about 20, 30 minutes ago, there were two, two separate uh, bursts of anti-aircraft fire. Um, everything was let off. And as you heard Jeremy Cook telling us from Baghdad earlier on, um, there was also the thud of incoming weapons. And uh, we'll be bringing you President Clinton's address. President Clinton is due to address the nation shortly. We'll be bringing you uh, his address as, as, as soon as we, as we get it. Um, just one quick point, Barry, I'll add one. There is this irony, isn't there, in the attitude of some of these smaller Gulf countries that while it's very difficult for them openly to say 
that they would like the Americans to go for Saddam. Actually, they would rather they took Saddam out than just had a little raid, wouldn't they? Because yeah, they don't want him as a martyr. Well, actually, you know, if the American gave them assurance that this um, strikes will uproot Saddam Hussein forever, I think they will be the happiest people on earth. But, you know, they know deep down that it will be extremely difficult task and there is, there is a risk that he will survive and they will be extremely embarrassed. And, you know, if the American suffered heavy losses, they may leave and they leave them to face, you know, the, the brutality of Saddam Hussein. John Nicol, I know you have strong opinions on the, the way the politics of this are going. I'll talk to you about that later on if I could. I'm just interested really in your experience of, of being there. Uh, if you were a pilot in the Gulf tonight in, in the Royal Air Force, uh, what are you feeling? Um, well, I can't speak for the guys who are out there now, but well, you know, in you many feeling? respects you're feeling uh, a mixture of excitement. It's what you've trained to do for, in some of these cases, 15 years. But there's a real sense of trepidation because you don't know what the evening is going to bring for you. You know, we're looking, uh, you're seeing it's uh, anti-aircraft fire coming. We're not actually looking at anti-aircraft fire, we're looking at missiles going up. Missiles are targeted against aircraft. So somebody's over there at the moment. While we're talking, pontificating, there are people putting their lives on the line out there. So what, what we saw Baghdad. earlier going up was, was, was missile, a mixture of missiles and machine gun fire. At, it at first like. we saw AAA, sort of World War II, AAA uh, missiles, uh, AAA guns, really, bullets going into the air. But just as you were talking there, I was watching missiles.